in the late 1970s in this village of Skokie, there was an effort by a group of Nazis who had an office in the city of Chicago to march in the village. Although the march never actually took place, it went from being local news to international news. And what it did in the process was mobilize the entire community of Skokie, not just the Jewish population of Skokie, but the entire community. And at that time, we were led in our village by a gentleman named Albert Smith. He was mayor at that time. And Mayor Smith happened to be Catholic, but he agreed that nothing should come into this community, nothing should come into our village that would be harmful in any way, physically or psychologically, to anyone who lived in Skokie. So he was one of the leaders who helped prevent the march from taking place. At that time, there were a number of Holocaust survivors in Skokie. While Jews had never at any time formed the majority of the population of Skokie, at that time there were many more Jewish residents than there are today. And among those Jewish residents, there was a very high proportion of Holocaust survivors. At that time, I think a newspaper said that one in every seven residents had some relationship to the Holocaust. The survivors, when they went around trying to get people to understand why the march should not take place, encountered a great deal of ignorance about the subject of the Holocaust. When they said to people, the march shouldn't happen, they were told things like, oh, it's a small bunch of crazy guys, just forget about it. If you ignore them, they'll go away. Now, the survivors realized that, if you will, you could say that Hitler began with a small bunch of crazy guys and ignoring him did not make them go away. So the survivors recognized that what they needed to do was to begin speaking about their own experiences. Now you may not understand this. Those who survived the Holocaust predominantly came to the United States in the late 1940s up through the middle 1950s. And when they came here, many of them did want to discuss what they had lived through but people told them to forget about it. That was then, this is now, you're in America. Build new lives for yourselves. However, when they encountered this ignorance about the subject matter in attempting to prevent the march of the Nazi group, they realized they had been silent too long and it was time to speak. So a group of them banded together and created this organization, the Holocaust Memorial Foundation of Illinois. They started in 1981. They began by meeting in people's basements. Then they decided to be official. They should incorporate. And they got a post office box, because if you're a corporation, you need to have some place to receive mail. And then they got a small storefront location on Dempster. And then someone saw this building. As you can tell, this building was never meant to be a Holocaust education center and museum. But that's exactly what the survivors who created the organization turned it into. And we have been working from this location since 1984.